Hello, uh, welcome to my 3D Amazon channel. Uh, today we're going to learn how to set up um, ZBrush displacement in Maya uh, using a uh, using a render called Redshift. Uh, Redshift is like quite commonly used in studios nowadays because it's an open GPU and it it works really faster, and it's really easy to learn too. So let's get started. So I have my Maya open and I created a sphere and I subdivide it once and use it in a such a way that uh, it's only on one item and make sure it's not like uh, overlapping on it. And um, I use this geo and I hit export selection and I exported this sphere into a folder. Uh, so now I'm going to ZBrush. So I'm going to um, append, uh, import my tool, import my sphere into the scene. So if you see, it is uh, only have a few subdivisions on my sphere. So I'm going to subdivide it once, two, four, five. So I get at least 1 million polygons in my sphere. By default, uh, you might have your ZBrush like this. Um, if you're watching this tutorial, make sure you have some knowledge on how to use ZBrush and Maya. So now I'm going to solve, sculpt some details. I'm not trying to be really precise. It's just like I'm trying to uh, show you guys how to export a uh, uh, display map to Maya Redshift. Um, so I'm just going like that and I'm going to change the alpha to something else. So I'm going to precise the details. There you go. So now, um, since we sculpted something, let's say this is what we wanted. We want these details to be projected on our um, displacement in Maya. So I'm going to hit Z plugin. And if you see there's like a, uh, like a, uh, like a timer icon if you click on it it docks to your left so it's right here so we are looking for something called multi-map exporter because multi-map exporter helps you to uh, export multiple items so i'm going to click on it and it's really quite handy to export a lot of uh, maps like vector displacement normal uh, text from polypane ambient occlusion cavity etc uh, if you want to learn more about it uh, go to zbrush documentation you guys uh, find a lot of details on it uh, so i'm going to bake out like a 2k map because i want this scroll to be really faster and i'm going to uh, set my displacement map to subdivision one because we are applying the displacement on the subdivision one and i'm turning off adaptive because it will take longer but it'll give more accurate maps uh, in a detailed areas but it's going to take a long time i have a good uv so i don't have to be smooth before map creation and i'm not using a tiff format so i'm going to turn this off and i'm making sure that my sub pixel accuracy is the value of you know four because higher values means better quality but it takes a little bit of time but it gives really good results and i'm going to set mid to zero because this really worked in Maya for me and some in some renderer it works at 0.5 or 1 and I'm going to use 32 bit because 32 bit uh, carries a lot of uh, details and you know a lot of pixel value in it and I'm going to export a EXR and um, to get accurate results um, since I set up everything in here I'm going to hit create all maps and I'm going to say sphere underscore this and dot and I'm going to save it so while this displacement map is created, I'm gonna like go over the scene, uh, what I have in Maya. So I created a dome light uh, through Redshift, Lights, and Dome Light. And I also plugged in a HDRI to my dome light um, uh, from Substance Painter. So let me show. I'm gonna enable the background so you guys see what the HDR looks like. Um, so if I click on it, if I'm hitting the render, so you guys can see, uh, this is how it looks like. It's kind of like a three point system, uh, like a studio and environment. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit F to focus on it. I'm going to turn off, uh, enable the background and I'm going to go to my Redshift material. This is a default uh, material uh, I assigned to my sphere and I'm going to say sphere shader and uh, I don't want to be really dark so I'm gonna change the value to one so it kind of looks darker to see the um, value and I'm gonna change my roughness to uh, 60.65 so it's really flatter so if you render it you guys can see it's kind of really flat so now let's go to the ZBrush it uh, imported our maps in 36 seconds that's pretty good because uh, it doesn't have that much details so in order to set up um, a displacement map in Maya so 
we do it through a shape node uh, so the shape node is here next to the shader so you go there by default it will this will be uh, disabled and if I hit render see there's I don't know if you can see it there is kind of it's kind of like app that's stepping based on my geo but I want this to subdivide it in my renderer five times because we subdivided the our sphere five times here so I'm gonna enable the tessellation and I'm gonna hit maximum subdivisions to five and I'm also enable the displacement uh, for redshift and I'm going to the hyper shade so make sure you don't forget that step and we have a shader node and we have a shading group so this is where we plug the displacement map so if you click on the redshift there's a slot called displacement shader so the easiest way I usually do is this is our displacement map EXR so I uh, click and drag into it so now we have this map and you can literally see uh, it give the details only on the where we created it so middle mouse and plug it in so it also creates a redshift uh, displacement node for us by default so uh, we don't have to uh, do it manually and make sure you can name it you know based on whatever you want since it's a uh, tutorial purpose I'm not naming anything and I'm going to go here let's hit render So our detail is sculpted here because we don't know which side it is. So I'm gonna rotate it this side. I'm gonna hit render again. See, we got accurate displacement without any problem. So it's kind of a one to one. You guys can see it's one to one based on what we sculpted, and we can see it here. And we didn't have any weird issues. So I'm gonna just rotate the light so. The light can hit better so you guys can see how it looks like. <coughs> so you guys can see um, it works properly. For example, sometimes if you don't uh, enable the tessellation but you forget to enable the displacement, it won't work. So make sure you enable the tessellation and displacement because I have seen a lot of people doing it. I have done it several times so you have to enable both to order, in order to get the displacement. So this is the technique uh, we use in production as well as in my personal work as well. Anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial. If you really like this tutorial, please like, subscribe and comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, write me at 3 dmuser.gmail.com or comment below. Thanks for watching, guys.